Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Need to remove a bunch of the trim in here. That is unlocked, but if this was locked, little knobs here tell you how to unlock it. This one you turn counterclockwise. This one you turn clockwise. Lift it up, and we take the whole uh, floor out of the cargo area. We'll lift this tray right out. For the passenger side, we'll lift this cover off. It's actually where your battery is. If you're doing the driver's side, you just lift out this cover. This tray can come out. It has a little screw piece in here. And there's actually, it's a plastic screw. If it's loose enough, you can take it off with your fingers. But it is a 10 millimeter plastic piece. It also has a spot for a screw. But once that's out, you can lift this plastic out and take it out as well. From here, the procedure will be the same for both sides. We're gonna pop this trim piece up from the trunk area. Unclips. And it should come up and out. Gonna remove the cargo tie down hooks. There's one here and one here. They both have these 10 millimeter bolts in them, so we use a 10 millimeter socket extension. those aside and do the same with the other one. It's a 10 millimeter screw up here. You could put a Phillips head in it or use your 10 millimeter socket. Push the seat down to get it out of the way. I need to remove a cover behind here to get to the screw so I can take this whole trim panel out. You could Try to pop this out and fold it back, but I don't want to damage this uh, trim cover. It will just pop out, but it doesn't give you a lot of room. You really have to fold it, and I don't want to damage it. So at the top, there's this little cover here. This is probably where a privacy cover goes. It's missing. There's a little slot. You take the small flat-bladed screwdriver and pry this out. You take this out. This is actually the fastener here. I slide the seatbelt out of the slot here. Work this panel off of the little lockdown loop for the seat and also slide it out from behind the panel here and then work it up and out from behind this panel. And we'll put this aside. So that just clips back up in there. The driver's side will be the same. You need to pop the hubcap off. You can use a large flat bladed screwdriver or a small pry bar. Just kind of work it under the edge of the hubcap. Just pop right off. You can use a 21 millimeter deep socket and a large breaker bar. We'll loosen the lug nuts of the vehicle on the ground so the wheel doesn't spin on you. So make it a lot easier to take them off once it's up on uh, jack stands. You can raise and support the vehicle. You can do this with jack and jack stands. We're gonna use our two post lift. Finish removing the lug nuts using the socket. Put the wheel and tire aside. I'm just gonna hold on to the wheel because it wants to fall off once I get this lug nut loose. wheel and tire off, put it aside. We're gonna lift up and support on the rear axle beam where the spring is. Most likely if you're doing this in your driveway, you're gonna have the vehicle on a jack and jack stands underneath that rear axle beam, but you just wanna make sure, so you're not using this to jack the car up, you're just using the piece of wood to support this side of the axle beam so that when you remove the axle, it doesn't fall. So just a couple pumps like that most likely you've got your jack and jack stands supporting on this axle beam anyways if you're doing this in your driveway. But just like that should be good. 
Now you can remove the lower bolt, remove the upper nut, and slide the shock out of place. I'm going to spray some rust penetrant on the nut and bolt. I'm going to remove the nut. I don't want to spin on the bolts. It could break the bolts. So we'll start on the nut side using a 17 millimeter socket and a long breaker bar. Get the nut loose. I'm going to counter hold the nut now that it's loose, and I'm going to use the 17 millimeter socket and the ratchet on the bolt. This way, try to drive the bolt out of the center part of the shock. Turn the nut off of here. Let's see, work the bolt out. There we go. I'm gonna go in through the passenger rear door so that I can reach over with one hand and hold on to the shock while I remove the nut. I'm going to reach in here, hold the shock from the outside, spin the nut off. I need arms that are a foot longer. All right, we'll get that nut afterwards. Take the washer off. Here's our shock. We'll actually take this cover off and reuse it on the new one and put that aside. Here's our original shock absorber we pulled from our vehicle and our brand new one from 1AAuto.com. Comes with a strap on it just so it's compressed while shipping. You can cut that right off before you install it. Comes the new locking nut, same exact style and design. This will work great, fit great in your vehicle. Just cut our shipping strap off. And take that cap off. Put the new, we'll put the old uh, bump stop and dust cap back on. like that and you can actually press the strut if you need to it's probably the way with the least amount of struggle to do this is to slide the shock up into the opening of the body all right I'll have the bolts handy and you can push on this it should compress fairly easily Go up inside here Push the bolt through. And just catch the nut for now. Now I can go up inside the car, install the nut at the top, and then finish tightening them up. Make sure you put this washer back on. And we'll install the new locking nut. Thread it down as far as it'll go. Eventually it'll touch the locks on the very end and I'll have to use my wrench. I'm going to use a five millimeter uh, hex key to counter hold the top of the shock. Use an 18 millimeter wrench. Just tighten it up. Once I feel it get tight, that's where I'll stop. Counter hold the bolt with the 17 millimeter wrench. And then we'll tighten up on the nut. See if I can get this started down with my fingers. This is less to spin with the ratchet. Tighten it up. I feel it get tight, I'll stop. You can lower the jack. Repeat this for the other side. You should always do these in pairs and your job will be complete. The only thing different on the driver's side, I'll just pull this out a little bit. When you reinstall it, you'll have to reconnect your courtesy light that's in the trunk. 
click when it locks in place, and then of course you'll unplug it by pushing in the lock, pulling it out, and taking this trim off. Otherwise, it's identical to the passenger side. Take our lug nut off that we had on here to hold the brake rotor in place. Now we can reinstall the wheel and tire. Get it up in place. Try to get this. Try to get them centered as best you can. These lug nuts do have a shoulder on them. The wheel is both hub centric and then lug centric, so the lug holes are a little bit wider. And as you turn these in, they're going to center themselves. So get them started by hand. Get this one in as far as I can go. And then reinstall the other three. Four. So get these all threaded in by hand. I take the socket and just snug them up. I put the vehicle on the ground. Torque the lug nuts. I torque the lug nuts to 76 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. Once it clicks, they're all set. Line up the hole for your valve stem. Push your hub cap into place. Reinstall the trim panel. Can I get it in place here? You have to slide it. It is very flexible. It'll go between the carpet. Just pull the seat belts out of the way here. So there's a lip here that's going to go underneath the trim. So you just kind of have to carefully maneuver it. It does have some flex to it. Push it in underneath. There's also opening here for the hook that the seats hook to when they're up. Slide it down and push that over and then push this behind. Just gonna pop that in here. And then feed the seat belt. Make sure it's not caught. It's gonna go underneath and through this opening here. It'll sit in the trim and we'll get it lined up. There's a bunch of tabs on the top. Get it pushed down in place. The tricky one to get in is this clip here. It needs to go in front of the seatbelt. There's a square opening in the sheet metal for it. So you gotta kind of flex the trim around a bit to get the other part started. Snap it in place. Get these lined up, clip them in place. We'll put this plastic lock back in, goes underneath where the seatbelt sits. Just pushes in place. Reinstall the self tapping screw that goes up here. Just going into a plastic grommet. Once it gets tight, just stop. Reinstall the cargo tie down hooks. They have a tab. This front one, the tab goes towards the top. Helps locate it. These have these chrome bolts. Get it started. Just tighten it up. Oops. Just tighten it up and then stop. Do the same for this one here. The tab goes towards the bottom. This panel goes just here above the battery. Clips into place. Just make sure your weather strip is over your carpet. You can just push it with your thumb to adjust it. And reinstall the cover. Just clips into place. This side panel clips over here, over the battery. Just 
just sits in place. This little cargo bucket goes down here and the threaded plastic screw goes here. And you just tighten it by hand. Place it right there and the cover goes over it. So the cargo tray goes in here. Reinstall your folding cover. There's three tabs at the top. It'll slide into place. You can close it. You can turn it to lock it if you want to. I'm actually gonna readjust this cargo hook so it's up. Put back down, uh, if you've got a cargo liner, we'll go back on top. Otherwise, the back of the car is reassembled. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.